But don't don't think, if I may history. say so, that colonialism was just a Western thing. What was one of the largest and most significant empires in history? But the Ottoman Empire. Do we say that Turkey has to do something like the West to deal with That's this? That's not the issue. You, well, are, you, up colonialism. you are talking about the Western view that they should stay where they belong. I'm saying that it seems to me to be much wiser that if you have a very large humanitarian crisis in, for instance, Syria, you try to make sure that people remain in the area. This isn't say all of them, but, but it is more likely. I, I absolutely agree they, they do. do. I've I mean, seen look, it firsthand. What I'm suggesting. Five million refugees. Look at Lebanon and Jordan per capita. What the I'm countries suggesting that have the to most. you is. In fact, in Lebanon, you've got one in every four person living in that country is absolutely. a Syrian refugee. Absolutely. So to suggest what they're not doing very much is just being misleading, believe being me, dishonest. Believe me, I'm not being misleading. And I said from the outset that I agree with the point that most refugees remain in the area. And I said that I think that that's a good idea. I'm suggesting to you that I think it's better that people, for instance, fleeing Syria, end up in the countries around Syria in order to be able to return to their country than putting them in but Norway. Hello, guys. What's up? Hi, guys. You hope you guys are feeling good. Welcome back to the show now. This is like real simple. I'm back again to a very interesting and amazing one by Doug Lassmer. Um, These clips are so interesting. So we've got this one in four parts. Um, but this one to precise is where Doug Lassmer was talking about immigration and the crisis of immigration. We know this word our days now. And immigration has been a serious problem, especially people migrating from the north, coming to the east and to the west. And Majorly, this is concerning the UK, and there have been a series of immigration rapidly, and this has gotten so high. Douglas Murray talked about this, and he gave a clear fact about this immigration. But no further ado, let's just bounce, and let's check how this clip went. Let's go. But let me give you just three answers I would suggest that we could hold on to as the beginning of a set of answers to this. The first is, okay. hold a very clear line between people fleeing for their lives from war zones and people fleeing economic deprivation. Mm -hmm. Find and hold to a very clear line on it. If you do not, I predict with absolute certainty that you will continue to erode public sympathy with people who need the sympathy the most, yeah. because these things will be rubbed together and elided. So, how, so I would suggest, first of all, find that and hold on to it pretty close. Second thing I would suggest, find a broad level of agreement, and there is a lot of this internationally now, that the best way to cope with the most serious situations is to keep people roughly in the area of the country for which they fled. It's much easier to look after them there. It's much easier to get international aid there. My own country, Great Britain, is, I think, the second largest donor of international aid within the regions of Syria. That should, I think, be one of the models for this, that we, we make sure that people, we don't have this idea that some people have that you disperse X percentage there and X percentage there and put these people there. Thirdly, I would say, make sure you increase economic productivity in refugee camps. Make sure people have a hope and a purpose and a work life when they're outside of their country. Look, I'm concluding with this because otherwise the music will get so loud you won't hear me. There are no simple answers to this because mm -hmm. there are no simple questions in this. This whole business does not give itself to sound bites, but it does need a much deeper debate than most of us have been willing to have so far. Thank you. All right. <laughs> Douglas Murray, thank you very much. A few provocative thoughts, no doubt, that you mentioned there. A few jumped at me, such as when you said, the developing world cannot move to the developed world. You seem to conveniently forget that the developed world moved to the developing world without asking permission. No, I don't, that, I don't. It, it seems to me as well that this is a particularly Western-centric view viewpoint and a misleading one at that, because you know mm. as well as I do, and the figures show it, 85% of the world's refugees, in fact, settle in neighboring countries mm. in the Middle East, sure. in Africa and Asia. They do not rush over to Europe. Sure. Uh, I, you'd make a big mistake if you think I hadn't heard of colonialism. Mm. Um, you don't and seem I to would also, it and I'd also suggest, by the way, that it's, 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 it, I don't know how long we're going to go on about colonialism for. I'm happy to do it as long as you like. But, but let don't me we just have to be factful, though. About well, don't we have to be? But also, don't think, it, about don't think, if I may history. say so, that colonialism was just a Western thing. What was one of the largest and most significant empires in history? But the Ottoman Empire. Do we say that Turkey has to do something like the West to deal with this? That's Islam? not the issue. You well, are you brought up colonialism. You, you are talking about the Western <laughs> view that they should stay where they belong. I'm saying that it's, it seems to me to be much wiser that if you have a very large humanitarian crisis in, for instance, Syria, 
you try to make sure that people remain in the area. This isn't say all of them, but, but it is more likely. I, I absolutely agree they, they do. do. I've I mean, seen look, it look firsthand. At Turkey, what 3. I'm five million refugees. Look at Lebanon and Jordan per capita. What the I'm countries suggesting that have the most. to you is, in fact, in Lebanon, you've got one in every four person living in that country is absolutely. a Syrian refugee. Absolutely. So to suggest what they're not doing very much is just being misleading, believe being me, dishonest. Believe me, I'm not being misleading. And I said from the outset that I agree with the point that most refugees remain in the area. And I said that I think that that's a good idea. I'm suggesting to you that I think it's better that people, for instance, fleeing Syria, end up in the countries around Syria in order to be able to return to their country than putting them in but Norway. But they won't return. You are suggesting that they don't want to return. Who in their right mind, if they, they had the option... I'm not suggesting they don't want to return. When did I say that? hear from a refugee. If they had the option to return, of course they'd want to return. I didn't say they wouldn't. They leave everything behind. But you seem to also be oblivious to another important fact that I just want to throw at you before we go to a video clip that I want to show you. It's what about the moral responsibility, though, of Western countries that have contributed to the destabilization of the region, the meddling, the military interventions, not to mention mm -hmm. the arms sales that continue as we speak? Mm -hmm. What about Do that? Do you want me to answer that? Okay, I'll answer that one frankly. Uh, nobody denies, for instance, the disaster of Iraq, but who are the people who intervened most in it Syria? Isn't just hang on, hang on. Let me answer it. Who <laughs> intervened most in Syria? It wasn't America, it wasn't Britain. It's Iran, Russia. It's, among others, countries, including the one we're in and others you're, you're around the Gulf before, here. Before we got to Let's Syria, we had Iraq, we had Libya, we had many Countries many in this neck of the woods were much more involved in the Syrian civil war than my country was. Well, you're also so do you want to take some responsibility for that? Do you think, want to take think, more refugees here can, in Qatar? Do you want to take around. more in the Gulf? No one right. is immune to any sort of criticism. But, so, well, but we're talking about glad to hear the Western it. countries, the British countries, uh, the British countries. What did Britain do in Syria? We're talking about these governments that you seem to suggest should be immune no, or when should did be I suggest absolved that? of any responsibility. When did I suggest that? I want to get to the other point that you make, and it's an important one, Douglas Murray. You suggest mm. that we need to actually balance between two very important <laughs> virtues, virtues, two important concepts mm. of mercy toward the refugee and justice toward your sure. own citizens. Let's take a quick look at this. Like, uh, is she attacking everything Douglas Murray is saying? Because I feel like, I feel like she's feeling offended and... I, I, I could feel like gestures and when it comes to immigration, Douglas Murray want to always put us his points there. He want to make sure that the person he's talking to is actually listening. And I could see her expression. She just felt like she was proving no points or no facts even at all. And let's check the second clip and let's see how it goes. Instance involving refugees. Do you think anyone for us? We are the Syrians. About 300 yes, uh, I give you the number of mouth authority. Because you are near mouth. Hello? Yes. About 100 children and 100 women and, uh, and, one, and uh, maybe 100 men. Please hurry. Water is uh, coming into it. The boat is going down. We are dying. Yes, you, are, you are have called Malta. You have called Malta. Don't throw us. You can run away. Call Malta, call Malta. I, I have no enough account on the mobile if you'll cut, please. You yes. have my number now. You call me, you please. A very chilling video, though I don't suggest that you um, respond on behalf of the Coast Guard, the Italian Coast Guard. But again, it's that same issue of shifting the, the problem to others. And just for a little bit of context, in fact, this boat, which capsized five hours after this call, killing quite a few people on board, we heard that there were about 100 women, 100 children on board, uh, that was twice as close to an Italian island as it was sure. to Malta. But again, this mm. idea that, you know, we have to safeguard our values, where does mercy fit in that? Not just mercy, but the obligation, well, the legal obligations of states toward I'd refugees. Suggest, I'd suggest that we all make sure we don't shift responsibility. Uh, there is a responsibility to everyone. That would include the state we're standing in now, wouldn't it? It would include all the states in this region. It would include the brother states. It would include the Ummah. It would include everybody. It wouldn't just be the Italians. Now, the Italians, by the way, and I could, let me just finish this point. That's a valid issue, but let me respond to it. Let me, because let me you finish the, the point. states of the, because the region. The Italians, it's a valid issue. But it's, unlike the European countries, allow me to point. just make this point. And Another like the point. European countries, I'll respond to two they, points, they yeah. are not parties to the 1951 Refugee Convention. So Conveniently. The obligations are, well, it's just a fact. Conveniently, isn't but it? But I'll let you carry on. It's but this fact. means that countries that are signatories to the Refugee Convention get more blame and more assumption that they are going to have to hold more of the burden than countries that didn't. And I'm choice. suggesting to you that nobody should be 
should be able to absolve themselves from blame. But if you go to Italy now, and I don't know when you were last there, but it is not the case that this is going well in Italy, either for the migrants who are arriving or for the Italian population. But isn't it because you don't the resources see these are not being poured out. into this? Let's face it, the policies are not there, the resources aren't there. I, it I isn't see about the these people numbers. when they arrive, I follow their stories, they, they, this is not, it is not the case just that they don't, you know, that the, the, local, the local populations in Italy have, I've been to Lampedusa, I've seen the boats coming in, the local populations are extremely generous, they are extremely kind to the people. Too much. Most of the populations in Europe, let's just not have this idea that Europeans are somehow incredibly cold-hearted. No, Countries no in Europe have taken in a lot of people and they are trying to deal with a very big problem very well, swiftly. Just putting the numbers in context, let me just mention sure. this very briefly, three million people sought asylum in Europe between 2015 and 2016, that's mm -hmm. a fraction of the population of Europe, which is 508 sure. million. And uh, Germany and Sweden took in 3% uh, of the population in one year alone. So they we're not talking about so negligible numbers and no, you shouldn't pretend that we are. Not across the board, certainly. Douglas sure. Murray, thanks very much. Thank you. Thank you. Wow, like she she was clearly dismantled and she felt she felt really good because looking at immigration today, Germany has taken a lot of numbers of immigrants and at the same time the UK have also taken a number of immigrants. But you can shift responsibility to someone else. Imagine you are in between borders and you want to, sh to shift responsibility and be like this country or this country no you can't do that and i love douglas murray for how he has said everything like he just so factful so truth and just so honest and it was becoming more with um douglas murray videos and i would love watching douglas murray video because he says facts and he just says things that are really updated and let me know what you think about the video i'll be so coming back with him now and thank you guys so much for watching keep watching and watch out for more peace and god bless you mm -hmm.